Okay, so today is day 11 of 12 days of OpenAI. And Google just casually drops Gemini 2.0 flash thinking experimental. It's their answer to the O1 series of models. But the best part, it actually shows its whole thought process. And it's currently the best performing model on Chatbot Arena leaderboard. It's on the top position with the Gemini Experimental 1206. This only has 32,000 tokens, unlike the 1 million or 2 million tokens of the other Gemini models. But it's available for you to use absolutely free. So if you go to the list of models in AI Studio, you're going to see this new Gemini Flash Thinking Experimental. They suggest to use it for reasoning over most complex problems, show the thinking process of the model, and tackle difficult code and math problems. And it can do multimodal understanding and reasoning. Since it's supposed to be a thinking model, I wanted to test it on the misguided attention repo. If you have seen some of my previous videos, this is one of the easiest yet very complex problems for LLMs. And the idea is that you take some very well-known problems that the LLM has seen in its training data multiple times, and you just change the wording a little bit. So if the model is able to make logical deductions, it should be able to figure out or recognize those modified problems from the unmodified problems. So far, none of the models that I have tested works well on these simple problems. But let's see, how does the new flash thinking experimental model does? Okay, so we're going to start with this problem, which is a modified version of the famous trolley problem. In this case, there are five dead people on a track. And we are asking the model whether it's going to pull the lever to switch it to another track where there is one living person tied up. So let me run this and let me also show you what the thought process actually looks like. Now this is the real time speed. So it's much faster compared to something like O1 or even O1 mini for that matter. It actually shows you the internal thought process. So if we look at it, it says here is a thinking process to arrive at the provided answer. So identify the core ethical dilemma. The scenario presents a classical ethical thought experiment the trolley problem, the central conflict is between sacrificing one life to save five or allowing five people to die. It's actually ignoring that those five people are already dead, but then uh, it goes on to think about, recognize the purpose of the question. So the user isn't looking for a definitive yes or no, but rather an exploration of different ethical point of views, right? Then state the dilemma clearly, present the different arguments so it kind of have a pretty neat thought process on how it's going to answer the question and it seems like an agentic system where it comes up with an initial plan and based on that plan it tries to generate an answer now it says this is a classical trolley problem a thought experiment designed to explore ethical dilemmas and moral reasoning there is no single right answer and it highlights the conflict between different ethical frameworks. So just like other LLMs that I have tested so far, it is actually not looking at the modified version, but based on what it has seen from the training data, it simply picks up or it simply generates the response based on that. So it, it's very similar to some of the other reasoning models, but the good thing is that it kind of shows the plan of actions unlike O1, which gives us a very summarized version. As a follow-up, I said, what is the status of the five people? And here it says in the scenario, as it's initially presented, the status of the five people on the main track is dead. This is critical element of the thought experiment. They are not alive and in danger of being hit by the trolley. They are already deceased. This significantly changes the ethical calculus compared to the more common variation where five people are alive and will be killed if the trolley isn't diverted, right? So when I simply asked it, what is the status of the people? It is able to give us the answer that we are looking for. But let's look at what the thought process now looks like. So it says, here's a breakdown of the thinking process to arrive at the answer about the five people's status. So identify the core information. 
Now, it says that the prompt clearly states that the status of five people, so five dead people, this is good. Acknowledge and restate the provided information. And this is exactly what it does. Then address potential for ambiguity or misrepresentation, which it also does to recognize that the user might be asking for a clarification or exploration nuances. Consider why they might be might ask this seemingly straightforward question, right? And clarify that the people are already dead. Explain the implications of the decision. Contrast with the variation. Explain the purpose of the original scenario and conclude with the summary and reinforcement. I feel like it's an agentic system which comes up with a plan and then generates an answer based on that plan. Now, I followed up this by this prompt uh, that imagine there is a small town and there's a particular barber and he has only one unique rule. So anybody who comes in for a shave, he actually shaves them. And then the question is, does the barber shave himself? Now, it's a classic barber paradox. So very similar to the other models. It goes on to say this is a classical logic, logic uh, puzzle known as barber paradox. And it reveals uh, a fascinating contradiction. Here's how it breaks down, right? So the first possibility is the barber shaves himself. However, it says that the rule states that the barber only shaves the men who do not shave themselves. This is not part of the prompt that we provided but it's actually a part of the original prompt or the original barber paradox. So again, there is this misguided attention. It's simply looking at its training data rather than focusing on the wording uh, that we provided. But let's look at what happens here. So the internal thought process, it says identify the core elements of the problem. So there is a barber. The barber shaves all the men in the town who visit his jobs. We need to determine if the barber shaves himself. So, so far, it's actually going the right direction because here it's able to break down the original prompt and it's not talking about the people who don't shave themselves. Formulate the question as conditional statement. The rule can be rephrased is if a man in town visits the barber, the barber shaves him. Now, consider the possible scenario regarding the barber shaving himself. There are two possibilities. So either the barber shaves himself or the barber does not shave himself. Now, until this part, it seems like it's going through the correct thinking process because it's not really adding the original barber paradox so far. Okay, but here it says if the barber doesn't shave himself, uh, then he is not a man in the town who does not uh, get shaved by the barber. So I think here is where it is kind of confusing argument prompt with what it has seen in the training data. Looking at the thought process further, it seems like during the initial thought process of planning, it doesn't really, is running into an issue that it's considering the original barber paradox. But for some reason, in the final output, I think it completely ignores its internal thought process and start looking at the original barber paradox, which is very interesting. Okay, now here's another one which is Paradox of the Schrodinger's Cat. But in here, it says this is a bit of a trick question designed to make you think about the mechanism within the box. But the crucial piece of information is stated up front. The cat is dead when it's placed in the box. This is pretty smart because most of the frontier models that I have seen, they completely ignore this fact and they go on to say that there's like a 50 for two chance. But this is pretty smart. It's able to figure out that the cat is already dead and hence there is a probability of zero percent it being alive when we open the box one day after but let's look at the thought process again so it says here's the thinking process to arrive at the solution for the dead cat in the box now identify the core elements so there's a dead cat in the box nuclear isotope radiation detector poison released if the radiation is detected and box open after one day. So probability of the cat being alive, recognize the trick or misdirection. The crucial point is that the cat starts dead. The radioactive decay and the poison mechanism are irrelevant to the initial state of the cat. This is great because I think it's able to just identify that the cat is dead and then the rest of the things does not matter. And even the 
internal thought process actually consider that specific piece of information and when it's planning on generating the response. But it kind of goes back into its training data for this specific prompt. So we have a wolf, a, a goat, and a cabbage, and we only want to take the goat across the river without it being eaten. The farmer can take only one object with him. Now, the simple solution would be just take the goat to the other side. Uh, but here it says, uh, take the goat across the river, leave the wolf and the cabbage behind, then return alone, take the wolf across the river, bring the goat back, right? And it, it goes through these multi-step process which are not needed based on what we are asking. And the reason is that during its internal thought process, the goal that it identified is incorrect. So it says, the primary goal is to get the farmer, wolf, goat, and cabbage safely to the other side of the river. So it's not really looking at the prompt that we presented, but rather looking at the version that it has seen is in its training data and just creating a response based on that. What happens when an unstoppable force meets a movable object? So it should be pretty straightforward, but it says this is a classic philosophical paradox and the answer depends on how you interpret the terms. So the paradoxical conclusion, traditional view, there are some other interpretations given. Again, I think it has to do with the misguided attention that we have been talking about, specifically with these reasoning or thinking models. But let's look at the thought process. So it says, identify the core concepts, the unstoppable force and movable object. So these are physics concepts, though idealized and often used in a thought experiments. Define the term as intended in the thought experiment. So unstoppable force, a force that by definition can't be resisted or stopped, it will inevitably cause motion. And movable objects, an object that by definition can be moved if sufficient force is applied, right? So the initial definition is exactly what we provided. Then recognize the contradictions. The core of the problem lies in the direct contradiction between the definition. If the force is truly unstoppable, it must move the object regardless of the object's properties. Conversely, if the object is truly movable, any force, even an extremely a strong one, should be able to move it. The conflict arises when you try to imagine a scenario where both definitions hold simultaneously, which again, I guess it's just looking at some of the examples that it has seen rather than focusing on the actual wording of the problem that we have presented. If you look at the last part of this, so this kind of shows you exactly where this is coming from. So it says, imagine someone claiming to have created a truly irresistible punch and someone else claiming to have uh, created a truly immovable shield. shield. What happens when they meet? The very existence of one contradicts the absolute nature of the other, right? Again, we are saying it's a movable shield. It should be able to move when enough force is applied. I think it's a pretty reasonable model, but it does suffer from misguided attention. Just like all the other LLMs, specifically the reasoning LLMs that I have tried on this data set. Now, based on this, make your own conclusion whether these models can truly reason in the current form or not. But this gives you an idea of how easy uh, it is to trick some of these models with uh, slight modifications of well-known problems or paradoxes. I do plan to create uh, another video on uh, the coding abilities of this thinking model, which will be uh, very interesting. So stay tuned for that. And if you like the content, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This was a quick first impressions of this new model. And I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.